Hi, hi, hi. Good evening. Um, um, it's evening here, early evening in Namibia for me. So I will I will say good evening. Um, thank you so much for joining us um, on this on this live um, Zoom. Um, I um, really feel honored to have been able to work on this project um, and to see this project find life um, and to continue um, to 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 do these interventions in Namibia. So for those of you who may not know, this project um, was started in Hamburg um, in collaboration with the Research Center for Hamburg's Postcolonial Legacy at the Hamburg University with Professor uh, uh, Jürgen Zimmerer. Um, so this project involved Namibian artists and German historians looking at a colonial archive um, containing over a thousand photographs taken during the German colonial period. Um, and so it was a year long research uh, project that ended up with a art exhibition at the end. Um, and during those early days in Hamburg, um, Nicola, Nicola Brandt, um, who's also speaking tonight, um, she was also originally part of that project, uh, as well as Isabel Kashavivi, um, and Nashilonga Shippo Mushanja, whose works are in the physical exhibition in Havana, and you will see a little bit of that um, later as uh, Helen takes you through the exhibition. Um, but when we were sort of uh, having our debates and our conversations and figuring out how we're going to go about, one, um, dealing with these photographs, how to display them, where, uh, you, you know, all of these different negotiations about, uh, you know, when it comes to especially dealing with violent histories, traumatic histories, um, black bodies, how do you display uh, black bodies that have been subject to, you know, this kind of historical trauma. Um, so we, we sort of had these very interesting tensions and negotiations amongst the team. And um, one of the things that we always kind of talked about even back then was this idea of documenting the process itself, because within that you you know there are all of these interesting things that come out and sometimes they can be more revealing and more telling than what you see like with the final exhibition um so fast forward um we had the exhibition in hamburg at the end of 2018 um and we also had the same or a version of the same exhibition at the national art gallery in 2019 um, and then come 2020 um, to, to kind of do the same project, um, the, the, uh, several, you know, ideas came out and it was a collaboration between many of us and we added even more people to the fold. Um, and one of the sort of main objectives of the, the project was not only to bring the topics and the artworks and the work that we did in Hamburg, to Namibia, but also to expand it further beyond just, you know, the gallery space or beyond Vintuk, you know, uh, taking it to, to, to places in, in, we had three workshops in Pietmanswap, in Hobabas and in Okakarara, um, and just working across, you know, these di different locations across Namibia with Namibian youth. Um, and similarly, when it came now to have an exhibition, um, it's, it's an exhibition of the process, yes, of course, but uh, we also wanted to think uh, about, you know, this decentralizing aspect um, when it comes to, you know, thinking of having a physical location. And we chose um, the Franz Nambinga Arts Training School in Havana, which is, you know, a quote unquote alternative space. And I, I will say that in quotations because it's like alternative to who? Um, but it is, you know, your non-traditional art space in a township in Vintuk. Um, also a township, an area that is very much historically tied to, you know, colonial legacy and colonial, uh, colonial struggle. Um, and, and in Namibia also, of course, that's also linked with, you know, apartheid. Um, um, but anyways, so essentially, that was really 
one of the important things is it's not just bringing it from Hamburg or from Germany, but also finding ways to keep this project really to reach within the communities and with, you know, to reach Namibians, um, not just Namibians who are art gallery goers or Namibians who are educated um, or academics, but Namibians, you know. Um, so yeah, that's just a little bit of a of the background on the project itself. Um, and every every single year that um, this happens, you know, we I, I don't know what next year holds. Um, however, the process changes just slightly. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, um, in those early discussions in Hamburg, we always sort of emphasized the importance of documenting these things. And through the documentations and through those, you know, the, the, the things that you don't get to see, um, you also see so much more. So we have a lot of that um, for tonight. We've had, so far we had two, we've had two physical exhibition events. Um, and now we have this digital walkthrough, but the digital walkthrough also gives you a little bit more uh, behind the scenes context um, of the whole project, um, at, at least the 2020 version of the project. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, please free, feel free to ask any questions. Um, Gina and Helen have posted or, or will send links to the various uh, websites, to the um, online installation and to the From Where Do We Speak um, project website. Um, so I do hope you linger on the um, read through um, some of the reflections from the, the team, the, the project team, um, and really also have a look through um, the, the online um, installation um, and the interventions there that the artists have staged. So thank you so much. I, I give it back to, to Gina. Great, thank you so much, uh, Vishy. For those of you who've just joined, we have just started, Vishy, so I was just introducing the project, and we're gonna go, I'm gonna hand over to Helen now, um, and maybe Helen, you can also introduce yourself a bit, um, and she's gonna take us through the online exhibition. Great, thanks, Gina, and Vishy, and everybody for being here. Um, is my sound okay? Good. Um, so while, oh, right, okay. So me, um, I am a curator uh, and I work with Gina and we work with artists and we love the work we do. And I'm not sure that there's much else to say about me, but while Gina and Vishy had the pleasure of putting together the physical exhibition, I had the challenge and the pleasure of trying to figure out how to make that the same work work online. Um, so what I'm going to do now is share, share the screen and kind of take you through it and just talk a little bit about how I en envisage you navigating the space, but also um, if you just go to the link that Gina's put in the in the chat um, under the link workshop page, that's where I'll be starting. So like any exhibition opening, if you want to wander off at this point and only half listen to what I'm saying, please, please feel free um, to explore it on your own. Uh, but I will say that as in between me speaking, we'll be inviting the different artists to speak. So tune back in when, when they start speaking. Okay, cool. So um, okay. Oh. Cool. So you should be seeing this is sort of where you land when you come to our exhibition. Um, and if you're kind of very curious about the workshops that, that kind of are almost one of the main components of the, this iteration of the project, then you can get there by immediately clicking on one of these four buttons. But if you just want to start kind of reading straight away, just scroll down. Um, and I'm not going to bore you by reading out this text or anything like that, but please feel free to read it. <laughs> Um, and there's a link here to the project website, which has a lot more depth and a lot more kind of written content as well. Um, then we've got two videos here that, that show the, um, the first workshop that took place in, in Vintuk, as well as um, 
a video from the opening of the exhibition. Um, and then we've got a list of everybody who's participated in this project. Um, so if you are here because you particularly love one of the artists, you can find their name here and just navigate directly to their contribution. Um, and then here is um, the, the exhibition, the physical ex photographs from the physical exhibition. Um, and this video particularly is quite lovely. Um, we have someone walking us through the space. Um, and that also gives you a bit more of a feel for the space that the, the show took place in. Um, I'm going to take us now to the online exhibition where each of the artworks are. Um, and we open with Shomotara Shibute and Lala Shilongo. Um, and I think that at this point, I'm just going to directly hand over to them to see if they want to talk about their work. Um, thank you so much, Helen. Thank you, Gina. Thank you, Vishi, uh, for the space. Um, can you all hear me? Yes. Yep. OK. okay. OK, super. Mm -hmm. um, so this photograph is part of the series, uh, performative and photographic series by myself and uh, Shoma Tala, the photog photographer, and myself, um, the performer. Uh, but we are both um, students of, of, uh, of visual culture, and especially with our core interest in Namibian visual culture making and reflecting and remembering and hoping. Um, we will just uh, just talk about the background of the project, uh, where we are now, and what we foresee uh, for the project to 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 develop into. The reason why I call it a project is because we we started off with a body of work, but uh, found ourselves, if I can call it, maturing to a conversation that is actually growing uh, bigger and bigger, and we're very um, excited uh, about that. Mandili. Uh, in my Oshiwambo dialect, which is uh, Oshimbaranu, means uh, where I am. Um, in Oshikwanyama, uh, it, it translates to Apandili, in Oshindonga, Bandili, which all just translate to where I am. And we'll try to three theorize this as to where we are, uh, both Shomatala and I, as Black women having grown in Vintuk, having a very particular relationship with Vintuk, and having to unpack how Vintuk has influenced our self identification processes as well. And the reason why we have started to theorize this with the title Mandili. It started with a conversation um, about our travels to Germany as as uh, as 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 women that grew up in Vintuk, and uh, it started off with a conversation really just reflecting on how not different uh, certain German cities and towns and villages felt. Uh, they did not feel different to where we are coming from. Often enough, when you uh, travel uh, to other landscapes and spaces, you you kind of uh, feel a vibration of of differentness, of 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 newness, um, an alternative uh, vibration around it. But we did not necessarily feel this traveling to Germany in our various um, professional capacities and 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 projects. Um, and we started to question this. Why is it that I hadn't felt that different when I was in Berlin or was in Hamburg or wherever I was in Germany? And it really got us to question, um, question ourselves as to, but where are we? And who are we? Why is it that I am flying all the way from Ventuk and landing in Berlin, but there's a sense of cultural um, uh, familiarity that, I, that I'm having? What is this about? And where am I really? If I can be in Berlin and I can be in Vintu can feel the same way, what does that mean um, for myself? And, and what does that mean? What has that meant uh, throughout my life processes, having spent my, 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 my entire life in Vintu, both Shumatala and I? And we really started to think about uh, the public space. We started to think about landscape. We started to think about visual icons that um, have influenced us, that have implicated us to uh, uh, to really uh, um, 
uh, um, affect our self-identification processes, particularly through the colonial patriarchal uh, roots. And we started to talk about how we grew up in, in Vintuk, playing in zoo park, uh, uh, going on excursions in town, and, and how that has particularly informed our life making and our, our, our sense of self. And so Mandili really uh, is a project by uh, myself uh, as a performer, uh, Shomatala as a photographer, unpacking as to where we really are in Ventuk and what it has meant to occupy these parks where these uh, monuments are uh, um, revering uh, Nazi soldiers, if I can call it that, these parks and these uh, uh, statues revering colonial patriarchy, what did that mean as young children, as young women, and as uh, Black women today? How has that influenced us? So that is the trigger, if I can call it that, and that is just what uh, we thought would be very good to open with it. It's the trigger of travel, the trigger of question, questioning why did it not feel different and really unpacking why is it that it didn't feel different and how has it informed us particularly these icons, be it food, be it monument, be it colonial space. And through this project series, we really focus on uh, colonial statues and monuments and, and how they have implicated our sense of selves um, in, in, in a way as well. So this particular image that you are seeing is a performance that we uh, that we had at the Alta Festa uh, uh, in the courtyard uh, where the, um, the writer Deng Mal is situated right now. And, and the redness of it, um, using body, using object, using color uh, to memorize, to, 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 to to, to mourn, uh, to remember, to push, to, to, to build oneself, one self identity, and to also try to explore what it, it means for identity to survive differently outside colonial spaces, outside this uh, patriarchal space, outside this violent space. So where are we now and where do we want to be in future? Um, so that is a, a, a nutshell in the, in the background of the project and Shomatala will just take us further as to how the project has survived in different spaces as well. Cool. Evening, everyone. Um, thanks for that, Nilao. Um, thank you for everyone for being here and thank you to the organizers. So um, the performance and the, the project, like Nilao said, is a conversation, a conversation between us, a conversation between the spaces that we occupy. Um, and it started, like she said, um, in Bintuk. And we looked at three specific monuments. So it was the right at Denkmal. It was the monument to the fallen German soldiers in the zoo park. And it was Kurt von Francher's monument in the front of the city of Bintuk offices. Um, and these performances took place just in the morning, early morning. Um, we didn't put out posters. We didn't put out invitations. And it was just like, an engagement with the space, taking space, and people were walking by kind of engaging, not engaging, um, and obviously kind of curious at what these two women are doing with this red cloth in the space. Um, so we, we did this in 2017, um, and from these performances, um, the result then came into these photographic images that are part of the exhibition today. Um, and these, ex um, these images have been exhibited in various formats. The first iteration actually was part of a Goethe project where we displayed them with objects from our personal archives because we are speaking from a position of our own experience. Um, we decided that we wanted to start the conversation from an individual perspective because often um, we find that when we come into a space often as black women and black people, you often are made to be like the spokesperson of, you know, you come into a space, you're the spokesperson of black women, you're the spokesperson of, you know, Africans, you're the spokesperson of Namibians. So we wanted to start, we didn't want to, to, to place our own experience onto everyone, a blanket like that. So we started with our own experience, um, looking at our personal archives, taking objects like clothes, baby clothes and, and um, photographs, um, because that is our memories of Vintok and placing those in the space. Um, and as we've gone, the project has, uh, has grown and it went into then researching these monuments that we've spoken about um, when the work was exhibited as part of 
my research project in Cape Town, we were looking at these monuments that was remnants of our colonial history in, in Vintok. And hence that link to that familiarity, as Nela is saying, to these German towns. It's like you've left, but you're still, you're still kind of in a similar space. Um, and then the work was also displayed um, in Cameroon as part of the Burden of Memory Week, again, um, in a different space, looking at, at the trauma that's linked to, to, to the colonial era. And now where we are today um, with this exhibition, From Where Do We Speak, um, in a moment where um, on the 10th of October, you know, Namibian youth, women, people just stood up and said enough was enough. Um, we are kind of in a moment of chaos, right? And um, this, this, this people spoke up against brutality and were met with brutality. And it just like it, it, we, we in this project are speaking to like this culture of violence that has existed, you know, from a colonial period, it's been placed on us until we internalized it and then kind of like turned it within our, with on onto each other. Um, and so when you look at this figure covered and shrouded in this redness, this redness represents almost like all of that. Um, red is a very strong color. Um, it can represent strength, it can represent pain. I mean, to many people, whoever looks at the image, it represents very many things, which is also, you know, the viewer can come with their own um, links to that. But I think for us, that background and the moment that we're in now in contemporary Namibia, um, we, we thought that this was quite quite befitting um, for where, where we're coming from. Um, and then going forward, just being reminded we have two minutes, so I'll, I'll wrap up. Um, going forward, I think um, we, we, be, we would like to expand this conversation beyond just the two of us. And I say, it's, we say it's a conversation, it's a project because it's, it's constantly growing, it's constantly continuing. And we would like to, to see where it would take us over time um, and see how that translates, um, whether it be in photographic um, imagery or performance. Um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll stop there and hand over to Nila if she has anything else to, to add. Yes, uh, um, absolutely. Um, and that I think the departure word here is is inheritance, and and we have uh, a di uh, a variant of inheritances and a variant of of contemporary experiences as now, and we really are interested in exploring those inheritances, and 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 expressing and exploring how they uh, make us think about how how we are positioned in in our society, in our uh, city, in our homes today. So we really want to see the possibilities of this project um, continuing um, and developing perhaps even beyond the colonial um, narrative. I mean, if, if that's even possible, but I say that because we also just want to have different corners in, within the conversation and sharing it with other people as well through performance, through photography and really carrying that forward. So um, this is where we are, Matuli Mandili, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both so much. This, um, this project has always been so exciting. Um, and I'm so happy to hear that you plan to keep going with it. <laughs> um, so I'm going to keep moving us through the space. Um, but I will say first, just listening to, to Nala and Shomotala that this project has done incred an incredible job of really um, asking people to think about where they speak from, but also asking audiences to pay attention to this aspect of, 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 of where an artist is coming from. Um, and I think that they both did an incredible job of talking about that. So next we have a work by Nashila Moshibre Moshanja. It's a soundscape. And um, I won't linger here for too long because what we'll do at the end of um, this session is that I will share the, my computer audio and um, I'll play this and whoever wants to can stay and listen for as long as you like, but the audio is an hour and a half long. So um, we'll do that, we'll do that at the end. But also in your own time, please feel free to sit with, to sit with this piece. Um, 
part of the joy of this online exhibition is that you can listen to this in your own home now. Um, and I think that's also really special. Uh, so like the physical exhibition, we've interspersed the work of these artists and facilitators with the workshops and the work that came out of those workshops. So the first workshop here is took place in Vintuk. Um, it was a facilitated training workshop. So all of the facilitators who then went to conduct workshops with other groups around Namibia um, got together and, and did this workshop. Um, so in each of these sections, you'll see images of the participants um, as well as images of what they produced. Um, so this is a large textile that was collaboratively made. Um, yeah. uh, then we come to Silke Behrens. She is actually the only painter in this project, which is um, quite fun for an exhibition to not be inundated with painting, but all the same, really wonderful to have her work. Um, Silke is quite an intuitive painter. She's also a therapist. Um, and I think that she has, she guided um, the, she guided aspects of the facilitated training workshop. Um, and, and these works were on the physical exhibition in Vintuk. Um, I apologize if anybody feels that I'm moving too fast through space, but I do want to give the artists a chance to speak, the artists who are speaking a chance to speak. So here we come to Prince. Um, and he is here and he will be speaking about his work. So if you would like to um, unmute yourself and start, Prince, you're more than welcome. Good evening. evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Clearly. Okay. I greet everyone under my voice this evening tonight or this morning for those of you who are at the other end of the world. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to speak on behalf of the poetry because I believe it can speak for itself. I can only give you um, the description of the poems. I mean, the dress code, the way it works, so that when you come across the poetry, you're able to recognize um, the poem, the, the poetry. Uh, basically, Ovidire um, Vyomambo, The Shadows of Our Town, we looked at, um, you know, the fragmentation from within as well as from without. Uh, the poetry was like um, an, ex an ex excavation going inside the body and the landscape to, to bring to the fore those stories that are out there that we are sitting with and that the landscape is also sitting with. Like um, the poems that you're reading now, Vidire Vio Mambo. Yeah, it actually looked at that, the pathos, the shadows, as well as um, the now, the overcoming. From where do we speak? Verbs that goes verbal. So basically, um, as, you, as you navigate through the, the, the poetry, I'm sure it, it should be able to speak for itself better than I would. So I don't want to come between you and the conversation that you're going to have with the poetry. So I'll say enjoy the poems and um, give us feedback. Thank you.
Thank you so and much. Of course, and, and of course, um, if you have any questions, I'll be here. Thank you so much, Prince. I think uh, we're having, have we lost Helen a little bit? Are you still there, Helen? Um, okay. Yeah. Apologies, everybody. Some um, technical difficulties, which happen in every single Zoom. <laughs> um, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um, all right. So what I wanted to say was that um, Prince did put together an incredible booklet of poetry that you can access through a link on, um, on, on his artwork pages, but also below um, over here. So this is, the, this is the workshop that Prince facilitated or co-facilitated, and they focus on, on, on poetry um, in, in Khababas. Uh, in the Omaheke region, and um, and here is the booklet of po poems and um, and the textile that they co they co created. Um, so you can read a bit more about that here as well. Um, and next we come to Nicola Brandt, photographer, um, and. Luckily, she's here, so you don't have to hear what I have to say about her work. You can hear directly from, from her. Honored to be here and to be part of this. Um, I would like to actually start with a, um, a passage from my book. I'm an artist and a writer. And um, a couple of months ago, I came out with a book called Landscapes Between Then and Now. And the opening passage is actually from a symposium or conference that um, Fichi, myself, and a few of the participants from this first iteration of the project um, joined. It was um, called Museum Conversations, and it was the opening night was hosted in the um, New Museum of Independence. Um, so the opening passage, uh, in some ways, captures or, or touches on some of the overarching themes of my research and my interest as an artist, but, but also I think speaks to some of the, the questions and the ongoing debates in this actual project. The genre of landscape and the practice of photography are entangled with legacies of colonialism and knowledge production and can never be fully separated. As Siraj Rasul emphasized in a keynote address in the, in, the, in the Independence Memorial Museum in Vintuk in 2018, it is clear that, quote, colonialism is not a time, but a politics of knowledge, end quote, and that important work needs to be done in rethinking knowledge systems based on problematic and persistent hegemonic structures. In South Africa and Namibia, debates around land, the enduring effects of apartheid, obsolete memorials, and how to represent the histories of these countries, including who has the right to do so, have become increasingly radical and urgent. This includes demands to decolonize public and private spaces that are still associated with persistent capitalist patriarchy and legacies of colonialism and apartheid. Two important grassroots movements that share resonances with Black Lives Matters in the United States, Roads Must Fall and Fees Must Fall, in South Africa in 2015 and 2016. The euphoria of this post parted era associated with Nelson Mandela's legacy is now well in the past. So similar to my practice as an artist, in my own research, I continue to address questions around identity, landscape, memory, and power in relationship to the German-Namibian War and genocide of 1904 to 1908. 
I also reflect on the war of independence in Southern Africa and how some photographers have attempted to address the entangled civil war histories of Angola, Namibia, and South Africa. So to answer this, or to not answer, one can never really answer because I think it's a lifelong kind of project and existential crisis of, you know, from where do I speak from? Hopefully one keeps revising that. And, um, you know, I ask that from a place of a lot of self-doubt. Um, I was born and raised in Namibia, but my cultural heritage or my, you know, my, my heritage is European. Um, my German great-grandfather arrived in Namibia in uh, 1910 um, after the German Namibian war and genocide. And my mother's family has been in South Africa since the mid 17th century. Um, my work really does, and you know, for a number of years now, over a decade, it has been attempting to confront these in intergenerational ghosts and to really work um, through the past from a position that shares legacies with white, um, white settler Namibians from South Africa that are of U European descent. <clears throat> so my practice really um, tries to interrogate this position, um, which is a difficult one to be in, um, but also one that I think is very important. It feels in moments like quite a um, sort of, you know, one can't ever escape one's identity. One has to kind of keep reflecting on it um, and burying it. Um, this incredible task of, you know, how deep into the past does one go and how does one live with the past? And I think this first body of work, one of my, one of my earliest sort of more critical uh, self examination is this project of documenting the removal of the Reicher um, Denkmal, which began in 2008 and then extended into 2009. And um, as we heard today, you know, these projects evolve and they take on many shades and forms. And um, I think I turned that lens, that critical lens back onto myself, my own heritage, but through conversations with fellow Namibians, specifically with two women, two um, Herrera women, Kukui, um, Mambari and uh, Kazavangwa, and they took me into their landscapes and they showed me how they experience um, their memories. And it was a very moving, you know, it was a very moving um, encounter that stretched over a number of years. This image that we're looking at right now called No Monument um, for the Fallen is where uh, Katavango was actually journeyed with her to her um, home in Obitoto. And she um, said that I should stop at this spot because um, this is a site that was um, important or, or, or quite sacred to, um, to, her, to her people, to her family. Um, this uh, view over to the Kaiser Wilhelm mountain is where one of the central battles were fought between um, the German colonial settlers and the Herero. And she says that, you know, one of the acts of remembrance is really to stop and to remain silent. And in this moment, I really felt that, you know, she in her moment of silence was kind of a living um, monument and a very powerful one in that space. Um, so if we, if we can continue there. <clears throat> so as you see, this is this uh, documentation process from a more straight documentary um, or more, if you want to call it a traditional documentary approach into more of this kind of performative space. Um, you know, this is the second location of the Reiter before it was finally, and thank goodness, actually removed and placed into the Alta Festa, which I thought was quite befitting. It's almost like it's prison. Um, and this is again a moment of silence and contemplation of this transition. If we can move on to the next one. Um, and this is another documentation of the writer, again, probably returning to more of a sort of straight documentary approach, but you really see this monument um, kind of having come undone completely and you sense that there is, um, yeah, it's sort of in disrepair. This Alta Festa is, is kind of, it's both, it's both still with us, but also somehow forgotten. And that challenge of what work does a monument like this do if it still exists? You know, that question, is it, does it give us something to speak um, to and against and to find new narratives? Um, or should it be completely destroyed? Um, 
that's a, a, I think, the question that I'll leave up to the audience. Um, so just to go back to this overarching critique of uh, this idea of landscape in the expanded sense, so landscape being, you know, not only landscape, but the experience of place, space, um, ecology, environment. I really, you know, in this, in this written project of mine, just exploring it from um, a perspective of, you know, sort of, if you want to call it like, call it a, a Western aesthetic of landscape, of looking upon, of claiming, of ownership, of projecting this incredible nostalgia and this idea that this landscape is not people, that there's nobody there, um, is, um, you know, is deeply problematic. So I've sort of, I try and deconstruct that landscape tradition in that particular gaze. Um, which is also resides to some extent in myself because it is my heritage and so to constantly critique that and then to look into you know this movement into other kinds of experiences of landscape and a very key figure in my research was a south african photographer called santa mufagen who sadly passed away earlier this year and um he spoke about landscape being something very different to him and his idea also evolved over time he said Landscape is not geography, certainly not in the romantic sense. It is about your view, where you live, where you die. That is your landscape. For Moff again, the landscape was seen, experienced, and embodied. It can be said that no view created by an artist can adequately convey the profound sense of embodiment of place that Moff again speaks of. In the context of Namibia and South Africa and the urgency for requests for land restitution, Moff again's description has become increasingly relevant. Um, Mufigan also thought about, um, you know, he also in some ways responded indirectly to the colonial archive. And I think the colonial archive is such a huge theme and Ichitua is actually going deeply into that um, research in her own work. And I think one angle of the landscape, um, sorry, the landscapes within these archives is that there is so much violence and destruction, but what is like for me one glimmer of hope because what you do see are these other, pre the pres presences of, um, Namibians who were here before the uh, colonizers and they're here afterwards and their sovereignty is there in those in some of those archives and there are some images which we came across in that Hamburg project um, in 2018 and 2019 where we saw this incredible defiance and a pushback onto this of this colonial gaze and I think one or two of those images really stuck with us as a group of artists so you know even though ultimately the colonial archive is a very destructive um, body of knowledge that needs to be really radically rethought. And I think Mushanja is doing interesting work by using sound as a way to kind of penetrate those cracks in the archive. There are examples um, like what Vichy is doing of some images of, of, of women and men that actually push back onto our or onto a particular type of looking. And I think that's um, incredibly powerful. Um, I just want to conclude my uh, little um, uh, sort of talk today with a, a beautiful quote, which really I, I really resonated with me. It is from the feminist scholar Sarah Ahmed. Um, she describes the notion of solidarity. She says, solidarity does not assume that our struggles are all the same, or that our pain is the same pain, or that our hope is for the same future. Solidarity involves commitment and work, as well as the recognition even if we do not have same feelings or the same lives, or the same bodies. We do live on common ground. It is empathy that matters. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Nicola. Um, can can I am I audible? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Cool. Just wanted to make sure I hadn't been lost again. Um, yeah, so I think part of what was wonderful about this putting together this exhibition was also looking at the work that artists have done over a long period of time. So with Nicola and Shamotala and Milau, these are works that, and most of the artists, to be honest, <laughs> these are works that have been in progress for many years um, and bringing them together here is really gratifying. Um, so this, this work is an installation piece by Kambizunda and Gave. And um, the images that we have of it are all from the installation at the physical exhibition. It's called Pathway to Death. And luckily, he has managed to join us for, for this session today. So if you have questions for him about this work, um, maybe we can convince him to answer those during the Q&A 
section as well. Um, so the installation consists of a number of these rocks hanging on chains and these smaller figures um, on the ground. Okay. Um, then we come to the one of the workshops that um, Kambavinda helped facilitate. Um, and this workshop mostly brought out these quite beautiful drawings um, and pieces of text. Um, then Vishy, who's also here this evening, um, these are her, these are collages that she created from pieces in the archive and the work is always exhibited alongside text by Ulrika Peters. Um, I just want to show you what it looked like in the space. So quite small pieces. Then the last artist that we're showing on this exhibition is Isabel Kachavizi. She created this installation specifically for this exhibition, but it, I think it forms quite a beautiful part of an ongoing series of installations that she does using these, these clay faces. Um, and in the exhibition at the Franz Linsinger Art School, the, this work was exhibited alongside and gathered, so the two of them sit in proximity to each other here too. And then the last workshop in Kirtmanshof in Karas. Um, also many drawings. If you have time, I would also suggest to read these pieces of text, each one is quite beautiful. And some of them are quite difficult to read, but I think very much worth it. Um, and that is the end of this web page um, and the exhibition as it exists online. Um, and I would like to, on behalf of the From Where Do We Speak project team, thank the Gerda Henkel Stiftung and the Namibian Arts Council for their funding for this project that has allowed it to happen. Um, and I think I'll hand back over to Vishy and Gina. Um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we can start asking questions. I do have um, some photographs that Denda and, sorry, that Shomotala and um, Nalao shared earlier. Um, so maybe we could start, if anybody has any questions for them, we could start with them. Um, and we can look at some of these other images from the Mind Daily series. Um, maybe I can just speak on the monument in, in Zoo Park. Uh, yes. So this, this was a very interesting day. Um, and it's also very interesting if we have to talk about public memory and our collective awareness on, on, 
on specific structures and and um, icons within our, our public spaces and how ambiguous they still continue um, to exist. And, and, and in talking about how we grew up in Ventuk and how um, and how we have uh, we have we've had experiences in, in 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 parks and this is zoo park where the war memorial is still installed until today, uh, revering soldiers that uh, that have died during uh, the battles with 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 ancestors in in Namibia and um, and still today there's still an ambiguousness of, uh, uh, about this this monument and and this 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 monument was particularly striking because uh, both Ndenda and I have memories of playing in this park, uh, playing around this monument as, as, little, as little girls and um, having to step into the space years later and really recognize what this war memorial means and, 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 and how ambiguous it has gone to exist uh, and continue to exist and, and, and recognizing but it makes sense how I have been socialized and, and educated to read myself in a particular way because of these icons and how they have systemically and informed my sense of self and, and being as well. So this was a very, um, a very intense uh, performance and shared moment uh, between Shomatala and, and I. Um, and it was also interesting to see how other public members were engaging within that performative space as well. As, as Shomatala had said, we didn't announce any of these performances. We literally just rocked up and, and engaged our bodies and ourselves with these objects and structures and spaces. Yeah, I just thought that would um, be good to share. Great, thanks so much. Um, we've actually had a request to, before we keep going with the Q&A, um, to, if we can watch um, as a group, the, the video of the facilitator training workshop. Um, so I'm going to, I'm just going to line that up now quickly. Um, In the meantime, um, while you do that, Helen, I'll just read out something that are coming into the chat. Um, I've, I've selfishly put a question in there that I've been meaning to chat more to the artists about, but um, I just wanted to read out um, the comment from Johanna Strunge. I hope I'm pr pronouncing that correctly. I just want to say a big thank you. Thanks for guiding us through this exhibition tonight and for all the artists to be here and sharing about your work. I saw the exhibition in Hamburg and I'm very impressed about how this idea developed further in your work. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's very, it's really cool to, I mean, obviously we've come onto the project in its um, second or third <laughs> iteration. Um, and so it's really interesting to, to think about it as this kind of long-term project. And I think that's also where the project website that um, Bishitwa has been working on with, with some other members of the team um, is really important as that archive. So please do go and have a visit. I'll repost the link for anybody who's joining in. And um, there we go. Helen, how are you doing? Good, I will, um, I'll start sharing the screen again. Um, oh, hang on, I don't think I've shared sound. Can you hear that? I can hear you.
on Vistic Phone. Okay, um, sure. okay, I can hear you. Alright, hi everybody, welcome back. Hi. Hi. It's your friendly neighbor on Zoom. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm glad we're all back together and standing in the circle. I was just about to invite us to really just feel our bodies again, feel the feet on the ground. You know, it's a moment to appreciate. The we are feeling full, you know. So. Um, acknowledge that we might be feeling a little bit tired or there might be other feelings that, you know, as we've come into the second part of the session that we are experiencing now. So just hold those in mind and be mindful, mindful of your body, mindful of your headspace. Um, yeah, and just, you know, for yourself, give gratitude for the moment um, to your body and to other bodies and everybody else around you. Okay. Uh, so officially we'll come back to the second part of the session of day one. And I would like us to just uh, do a little um, game to get back into the whole creative headspace. And this game is going to go a bit fast, so just two rounds will be fine. Okay. The game is called Le Yes, Let's. I'm sure some of you know it or, or have heard of it before. Okay, so it goes this way. One person who is willing and brave to start will suggest an action, yeah? And all of us will respond with the words, Yes, let, meaning we will be doing that action. We are agreeing to do that action. Let's all open an umbrella. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> let's. Let's all start a fire. Yes, let's. because they're ghosts. Yeah. Nice. Who keep haunting us and coming back. And, 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 and 
Sorry, I was muted. Um, I just had some feedback that that was a little bit too choppy on your side. So um, please, please do watch it um, when you have time. Cool. Perhaps we can go back to one of those questions that came through earlier. Yeah, well, I, oh, I have, um a question that um, <clears throat> that I was hoping to pose to the two photographers of the, of the group, so Shomotala and um, Nicola, uh, just because, I mean, we were working with your images and, and in this iteration particularly, we um, decided to wheat paste your images. And I just wondered if you could speak a little bit about how um, because obviously creating your images is, is one thing and then the display of it um, and often how, how that display changes from project to project sometimes, um, how that potentially influences your thinking about your work or um, if at all. So whoever, if anybody wants to answer. Um, yeah, if I, if I may. Um, I think for me and just with this work specifically and with this project, um, the photograph isn't the only like end product, it's part of a process. And so, so I was quite excited actually by the thought of having it um, read pasted um, because often photography can be treated as quite a precious object, you know, um, looking at its history of like, from it being like a truth telling medium, so to say, um, to now like we're using it through performance. So it's almost like a documentation of a performance and documents aren't always, you know, treated in the most pristine way. So like the objectness of the photograph, I think through the different iterations that this work has been displayed in kind of like you um, you don't get too attached to its preciousness. Um, rather, it's there to kind of facilitate the conversation that we're having as part of the project. Um, yeah. Um, I can completely agree with you that it acts as a kind of a form of documentation. And I really loved uh, the suggestion of, um, of using the wheat paste technique um, in this context. It was just another, you know, you, you experience the work in a very different way. Um, I must say photography is endlessly frustrating, especially the single image. Um, so uh, it was really important that at least one or two images were placed in a sequence to try and tell some sort of a um, some sort of a story um, and in fact that's what led me to um, sort of multi-screen video installations because um, we know that the photograph is often a, a delusion or a myth or a, a particular point of view and in fact that image of me you know I took a photograph really looking down 
across the city, really from the position of the Reiter, which is a very strong, like that panopticon view onto the Christuskirche, knowing very well that in two, three days that this monument, this view would no longer exist. And um, it was very strong for me to actually, you know, say, okay, well, this is really from where I'm speaking, this is my heritage, um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be undone and something else and something um, exciting is going to move and, and, and replace it. And you can argue, you know, um, uh, there was uh, the statue of Sam Nioma that was uh, uh, placed um, close to that same location and then the new Museum of Independence. Um, but the photograph is really only the beginning of um, the story, or it really just is a clue. Um, the photograph and even the monument really is about, it really tells us what we bring to it, what questions we have, what depths we want to go to, to understand what this monument or what this image might mean. And I think it's just really some sort of a start. Um, so Gina and Vici and Ross, I really, you know, I was really, I really love what you did in the space and the suggestion of the wheat paste really made, communicated the idea and exactly, you know, as you were saying, it took away that preciousness because you don't want necessarily these images to be precious. You've really got to also think about the context. Um, I don't see them as that at all. I see them as trying to do some sort of a some sort of work or trying to begin a conversation. Um, and what I'm so excited about all these, you know, the projects we discussed today, we really have a sense of this kind of long duration that, you know, even in our lifetimes, maybe, you know, this, this project will take on different forms and it'll, be, it'll exist beyond our lifetime. And I'm hoping that the conversation will move well past, um, yeah, this, this, interrogation of colonial legacies, but I think it's only really just begun. And it's so exciting to see all these voices um, that are really begun in a kind of more entering into the mainstream. I think these conversations have been with us for, in, you know, in different communities for a very long time, but that we are here together um, speaking to a wider audience. It's amazing. Um, sorry, that's a bit of a ramble, but Gina, I hope I answered, uh, or I hope we answered your question. Definitely, thank you so much, both of you. It's great, yeah. Really great to to hear more. I, I love chatting to artists. I mean, that's why, like Helen said, we love what we do. Um, so I think, yeah. Thinking, to interrupt, <laughs> but um, based on what N Nicola and Shomotala were saying about the preciousness of the object, and I was thinking about our role as, as caretakers when we come to work with these pieces and to work with these artists um, about trying to balance balance that care um, and to suggest to an artist that their work should maybe be wheat pasted instead of hung and carefully framed and should maybe exist outside of the gallery spaces. There's a, I think what's, I think what is incredible about coming to this project and like Gina said, we've come to it relatively late, you know, it's had so many iterations and now we're coming in and learning. And I think that, um, the project as a whole places care in seems to place care in in the right place so none of these artworks are cared for at the expense of the communities they wish to talk to or the communities that they're talking about um, and i think that that's an important an important part of the work that we've done here um, i'm not sure if anybody else has any questions or Comments are also very welcome. Maybe we could um, hand to Vishitwa to give some closing thoughts. Sorry to put you on the spot a little bit, but maybe also, um, yeah, just a little bit of reflection on the project and, and how it's been yeah, viewed. Yeah. For um, yeah, I, I mean, like I said earlier, it, it's, um, it's really been great to see this project take take on life um, in in this way, um, and it's also a kind of just made me realize perhaps what we need to center in projects like this. Um, in this case, you know, this project is centered on a colonial photo archive. Um, 
and if I have to just think of some of the things that I've been reflecting over, over this whole process is, yes, we sort of had to center this uh, colonial photo archive. That was the basis of the project. Um, but as we sort of went into, especially in Okakarara, where we actually got to do the workshop in person, all the other workshops, we, we did them online um, due to COVID lockdown restrictions. So we couldn't travel to the, to the, to the specific place. Um, but in, in any case, when you see, um, when you sort of see the youth engage with the topics in the history, I sort of realized that perhaps we're centering the wrong thing. We're centering the colonial photo archive when really we should be centering the, 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 the voices of the youth. Um, and so perhaps that's something that I would like to put out there just um, as a thought for any one of us who do this kind of work and these kinds of projects and for institutions and, and sponsors for these kinds of projects. Um, that yes, we sort of have to center the colonial, you know, sometimes to get the funding, but um, really, I think that's not the most important thing. And that's what the, it, it took this version of the project for me to realize that the archive is not, is not the thing that we should be centering um, in, in this project. And I, I also want to kind of substitute the archive for any other larger thing that represents what an archive represents, um, you know, this colonial knowledge, um, you know, these, these sort of uh, power structures um, with, 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 I don't know if I'm making sense uh, um, or if you're following what I'm trying to say here, um, but yeah, I don't, I don't wanna go and say burn the archive. I think that's a little, you know, and in 2018 in Hamburg, these were also, you know, the debates that we've had. But certainly my point here is that um, working with the youth, seeing the youth engage, hearing from the youth, um, I think it's important to center those perspectives. Um, as much as we want to look back to the past and uplift our ancestors, um, I think the youth, uh, the, the voices of the youth are the future. So that's what I will just leave with. Um, if, if anybody was able to follow that, that thought there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been such a pleasure and such an honor to work um, on this project. Um, and I just wanna say thank you again to the entire team. I mean, this is a huge collaboration between so many of us. Um, and again, I would also like to say thank you to our sponsors um, um, for making this, this possible. Perhaps next time we don't have to center the Colonial Archive, you know, just uh, putting that out there also. Um, but really, yeah, just thank you to everybody and thank you for all of you who have been following this project um, from, from, from those, those early days in, in, in Hamburg in 2018. And, and it's been an ongoing collaboration. And, and even if you see like a lot of the artists that are in this process, um, if you look at Shomotala, Shivute and the Laos Longos collaboration, that is an ongoing thing. Um, if you look at Isabel's um, installations with the clay faces, those are that's an ongoing conversation too and every iteration of it is different and every iteration is important um and it just goes to show that it, it's it's an ongoing thing and then and that it, it sort of never ends almost um so yeah so thank you thank you um i hope and and we hope that you you do stay um and join the conversations um uh, please do um check out in your own time the the online installation as well as the the project website um yeah that's all <laughs> thank you so much very yeah, sloppy think, closing but yeah <laughs> yeah thank you thank you thank you thank you everybody um and like helen said well thank you helen for taking us through um, your incredible online work. And please, uh, if you want to visit the physical exhibition, it's still up until the 25th of November at the Franz Lambinga Arts Training Center. So you can just contact us. It is open daily from nine to five, but we do ask that you just give us a shout 
beforehand so that we can um, make sure that front knows that you're coming. Um, and then this online exhibition will be up for a while as well. So please um, enjoy it in your own time and um, keep engaging with us, keep engaging with the project and um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Can I add something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah I would, would love to add something for, from, uh, for this project. It has been a very quite an amazing project uh, to collaborate with many artists with a, which, which are so very diverse. And uh, for me, it was a, a learning process. It was my first time to be in this project and uh, working with many artists that are more advanced in, 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 in many way of that they have been exploring this kind of a colonial issues, discussion. It actually helped me a lot uh, uh, as an individual. Uh, I came to realize that uh, as we are growing, we need to set uh, a specific standard in our life as we are dealing with uh, issues that are very effective and uh, it uh, open up our mind and our thoughts and our uh, engaging because we need to interrogate and we need to interact with uh, with the community out there as we as an artist i think we are the voice to the voiceless and we we need to stand together Although we are so diverse in many ways, I think we do have that uh, same same voice that speak uh, to every corner of the country, to every corner of the globe. I think we are those type of people, and I think this uh, one word that I got from my great uh, lecture, Miss Nikki, that she have said: when you do art, it shouldn't be something that like uh, you speak. Uh, through the art without knowing what you are trying to say. The art must re represent you enough instead of you trying to explain the artwork. So that's the most important thing that I have kept in mind. And I think overall with the youth that we have engaged from Mogagarara, it has helped me a lot in the community that we, we engage there. So we had some uh, 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 kind of thoughts and ideas and uh, fights that are also among the community and the descendants. You, you could see what actually have been happening. And uh, it's very controversial it's, and it's so intense with the infights of the reparation, all these type of things that are happening. And with the tribalism we have and the such thing, it's actually, it has been planted into our mind. And we as an artist, we are there to, to, to shield or to shift this. It's like a shift of mind to take this away from our people, to understand what, what is the unity, what is peace, how to move on with all these fights that are happening. Because fight doesn't help. I think it's what I believe. So overall, I would, thank, I would love to thank everyone who participated and for the evening. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much, much. Yeah. Great. Um, Hello, did you want to put on the uh, sound piece for people to have a listen? Yes. Is that possible? Um, yeah, I'm going can to I say. add something? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm really a young person who's really eager to learn and I'm really grateful that I'm being part of such a workshop and I'm really gaining some ideas and some knowledge from such a great workshop. Uh, it's an honor that I'm being part of it and I don't know how to thank every single person that organized this and put this together. So I just wanna say thank you for everyone that organized it. Thank you, Love More. Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for 
the energy that you brought during the workshop, you know, um, because we were, um, I think um, uh, us in the project, we were also nervous doing these, these workshops with you, with you, you know, we weren't sure what to expect um, if, if something like this would even be interesting um, for, 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 for you, you know, for young people, maybe, you, you know, you're interested in other things. Um, however, each and every one of you brought so much more and brought so much out of this project that I think for me um, as, as an artist, I'm an, I'm a, I'm an artist myself, um, but I'm also, you know, um, starting to sort of work more and more on these projects that deal with sort of these entangled histories and everything, um, history between Germany and Namibia or, or whatever it may be, colonial history, apartheid history. Um, and I, I really, I think we're always, we're always talking ab about these conversations in, in places like, you know, art galleries and the university and, and all of this, but we're never excluding, you know, the youth. I'm sorry, we're never including the youth. Um, so really, uh, for me, that has been an eye opener as far as like who we should listen to, you know, yeah. who, who should be speaking. Um, because at the end of the day, uh, you you are the future, you know. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for the energy that you brought and for being there and for and for participating. And yeah, we'll definitely keep in touch. <laughs> okay, ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thanks so much, um, and thank you to everybody who's added to the chat. Um, I'm going to start sharing this. The sound piece by Nashlangu Shipwe now. Um. And as Helen mentioned, you're welcome to stay on and have a listen or head off if you need to. Thank you so much again to everyone who's joined this evening. Bembera, <laughs> 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 